Welcome back to another Courtside Comparisons presented by NerdWallet here with all-star Tyrese Maxi. Tyrese, welcome back. And today is game day on Courtside Comparisons presented by NerdWallet. We're going to start with a game some people called Peaks and Valleys. In my house, we called it high-low. Did you ever do that growing up, like the best part of your day, the worst part of your day? Mm, no, not really. Okay, so we're going to do it with the seasons of your career. Okay. So we're going to start with rookie season. Um, a peak from that season and a valley from that season. What stands out as the highest and lowest? The valley, I'll probably say, was like, which is this is a good thing. Not this is not a negative thing, but I guess this could be my valley. Um, I that was like my first time I was available for a basketball game and didn't play in mm -hmm. Sacramento. We won the game, so I wasn't too upset about it. But it's just like something that you have to go through, especially being a rookie on a really good team. And uh, that's when I realized like. The NBA is very, very talented, and our team was really, really good that year To for us to, like, you know, growing up, you're always the best player in the team, you know, stuff like that. So a team a lot of times can't win without you. For a team to just win and you don't play at all, it's like a different feeling. But it's also a good feeling knowing that, you know, that team's really deep. So I guess that can be my valley. And then my peak, I'd probably say, I know a lot of people talk about, like, the Denver Nuggets game or the COVID game when I had, like, 39, but for me it was – it was uh, probably playing in the um, second round against the Hawks, game six, just because, like, the way that game was going, like, we had no momentum. Like, when I got in the game, I just I was rewatching it the other day. Somebody was talking to me about it. It scored, like, 21-8 to eight when I got in, and, like, I, like, helped us win the game, and we was able to go back home and force a game seven. So I think that was probably the peak of my um, rookie year. I was talking to Jay Love the other day, just because he's been discussed on this program before, Jason Love, one of our player development coaches, and he talked about that as like his favorite Sixers playoff memory was that specific game. Yeah, that game was crazy. Like, it was just funny. Like, I just remember going in a shoot around and Coach Doc telling me that I was probably going to like get in early. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, all right, hey. But I didn't think I was going to get in that early. Like, I. I was, like, prepared to get in, like, the first quarter. But, like, I got in. I was the first one off the bench. And I was like, oh, snap, I'm going in. Okay, let me take off my pants, like, throw off my, get my shorts and get ready. But uh, it was just funny because uh, Spencer Rivers, who's, who was my player development coach at the time, he was also on the bench then, and he was just going crazy. So it's, like, clips of him just running around. Because, like, Kobe, you had the space. Yep. It's so, like he was just running around. He got jumping. in trouble, right? Yeah, he got in trouble. <laughs> but uh, it was, it was, that was, like, pure joy. Like, I think everybody over there was extremely happy because it was a must win. And, like, for, like, myself to go out there and do that and compete and um, be successful, it was great. There were some big Atlanta celebrities there that night, too. And even they were smiling watching you, which is very cool. Right, right. Tyrese, year two, your sophomore season, Peak and Valley. Peaks and Valley, my sophomore season. Going to the um, All-Star Weekend and doing that skill challenge with Scotty <laughs> Barnes. That is That was the, the lowest of lows. It was the lowest of lows, but it was like, <laughs> it was like hilarious. So people still talk about it today, but uh, did you I, guys talk about it this year as first time all stars together? Yeah, we talked about it. We said I, I told everybody that we brought in Trey Young to help us because we needed some help from last year. The crazy thing is, like, because he went the wrong way at the beginning, that caused me to go the wrong way. So then we still messed up again, but we almost won this year. So that was great. But that's definitely the valley of my sophomore year in the peak. I go back to the playoffs again. I think uh, my first time starting the playoffs, and we played against the Raptors. First game, game one, it was lit. Like, it was amazing. And uh, I had, like, 38 or something like that, 39. And we won. And, like, just, like, for me, it was big for me because, like, that was my first time starting a playoff game. And I've been starting, like, for all year and whatever. But starting the playoffs and playing in the playoffs is just totally different when a team actually has the game plan for – you, because you are a starter, and, you know, they, they're going to try to find ways to take you out of the game or find ways to, you know, take you out of what you like to do. So I feel like it was great to go out there and be successful in that series and in that game in particular. Peak and Valley of year three, you have a lot of options because it was your best season, right? But you've been open about the fact that there were certain things that you had to overcome that was maybe the most adversity you had faced in your career. So when you think about year three, Peak and Valley. Mm, the Valley of year three was definitely me getting hurt. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the easy one for me. I think – I was I was playing at a, such a high level as far as like my entire career before then, before now I guess, and it just like it hurt me because I don't know I just I didn't I didn't I don't feel like I was able to reach my full potential of that year. Um, 
just because I had to, I got your numbers injured. were like all star worthy, right, right? right? Before yeah. and after the injury. Right. I feel like they were. So it's just like you just I don't know how we ended up being still being really good that that year. Mm-hmm. I mean, um we had a really good team. But I don't know how much I could have elevated, you know, our team to like the next level if I could have. But it, I mean, I think that was definitely the valley of it. But uh, the peak, oh, man, I don't know, man. I, I've been going playoffs a lot. The last two were playoffs, so I'll probably say I'll stay there and say that uh, game five, the last playoff game we won in Boston, like to go into to TD Garden and then win a playoff game and be leading in the series 3-2. I mean, it sucks. It's heartbreaking now that we lost, but – you know, that's in the past, but to go there and, and play very well and and beat the the Celtics and the, the guard and go up three two and have a chance to close out a series at home, that was definitely um definitely the peak of the season right there. The end of season four remains unwritten, so you can't pick a playoff moment for the peak yet. But peak and valley of season four, your first all star season. I think the valley of, of of this season, I'll just say for myself and, and us as a whole. It's like it was so many different like obstacles that we had to overcome as far as injuries. Like, um, I mean, it was tough, man. It was tough. Like, uh, we were very healthy at the beginning of the year, and we were really, really good. And like, we started out eight and one, or whatever. I don't, I don't know what the win percentage was. I forgot. I saw it the other day, but uh, it was just like a domino effect. Some if one person mm-hmm. gets hurt, one person come back. One person, two people go out. One person come back, three people go out. Two people come back, one person goes out. So, like, it was never a time where we could just, like, fully, like, roll each other back in and to everybody being healthy. But I think it was good adversity for us, honestly. So I would use it as the valley. But, uh, you know, it, we was creeping out of that valley. You know what I mean? And uh, it's been great. And for the peak, man, it's, we've been in a lot of peaks, a lot of peaks this this year. A lot of good things that happened. I'm, I'm going to say um, going home and and, and winning in, in Dallas. Yeah. I haven't done that in a long time. And I uh, had a lot of family there, and uh, we played really well. So that's definitely one peak. And then I know everybody's going to say about All-Star. That was that was a peak for sure. But, like, I just I had that goal in mind. I, I keep saying that I was going to make that. So I'm very grateful for it, and I'm very appreciative of it. But that was something that I, you know, I had in the back of my mind that I felt determined to do, and you know. I think it was it was my time to do that, so I'll definitely go with the Dallas situation. Nobody was surprised by the by the All Star birth if they've been with you, if they've watched you, and I know that you weren't surprised either. Right, right, yeah. right. I think so. I, I mean, I was, I mean, I just didn't get to see myself, my name get called because my mom and Joel was calling me, but <laughs> I was hoping that that's that's what they was calling me for. So it was good. Tyrese, if you were granted a couple extra hours in every day, so it's a 26-hour day, let's say, and you can't use the two extra hours to do anything you already do. So you can't play basketball, you can't sleep, you can't play games. What are you doing with your extra two hours? Good Lord, I can't sleep. I can't play basketball. I can't play no video games. Uh, I would make a skit, like a, a skit, and I would go do like a play. If I had two extra hours to where like I wouldn't be tired, like, you know what I'm saying? It didn't affect, like, anything in front of my body or anything like that. I would yeah. go do some, like, uh, plays and some skits in, uh, you know, theaters in uh, Philly. I think that would be pretty fun. That would be awesome. So yeah. let's say you had an extra month in your year. Let's say it's a 13-month year, and that month is used the same way. You can dive into, like, one specific project. What are you spending 30 days on? Hmm. I don't know. Maybe go back and do some... Uh, like some schoolwork at Kentucky, maybe <laughs> one extra month. Yeah, I'd probably do something like that. I don't know. Yeah, I'd probably do that for sure. Cause what I would just, you want to learn more about? Just like history, mm-hmm. history. Like I'm, I, I mean, me being older now. Like when you're younger, you don't want to do like history, Texas history or U.S. history. You hate it because it's hard. When you get older and you start seeing different things come out on TikTok or you see things on social media and you want to find out how true they are or you mm-hmm. just see documentaries. So, like, I'm big on watching documentaries and seeing stuff that I, like, I didn't, like, live through. Yep. Whether that's just African-American history, American history, Texas history, like, all types of history is kind of cool to me. And, like, to see, like, some of the, the key moments in, in you know, in history, that would be pretty fun. So I'll probably do some studying on that. 
Tyrese, if you had to pick three favorite Marvel characters in the whole universe, cinematic universe, which three would you choose? I would choose Spider-Man as my number one, uh, for sure. You don't sure. have to rank them. Black Panther as my number two. And then as my number three, I have to go Iron Man, just because, like, I feel like he's OG. Tony Stark was there, you know, he was the first, 2008, you know, the first movie. So it's like, he has to be in there, I think. His character was was extremely amazing. I feel like they'll have to f find a way to bring him back somewhere. Okay, and if you had to pick your three favorite basketball players of all time, who would you pick? Um, Don't rank them. Just give me three. I'd probably say Dwayne Wade. Uh, I liked AI, so they both were number three. I'm trying to figure out. Those are the easy two. The last one's going to be hard for me. I think it was Kyrie Irving. Yeah, Kyrie Irving was definitely like when I was in high school. I was, I was a big Kyrie Irving and James Harden fan. So, you know, James, I still love you. Okay, Tyree, start bench cut. Dwayne Wade, AI, Kyrie Irving. I'm gonna cut Kyrie Irving just because I'm still <laughs> playing against him right now. Um, he's nice though, so nice. And then I'm gonna have to start D Wade, start D Wade because I was my also like he's my favorite player of all mm -hmm. time. And then. I know Philly fans, I know I have to bring AI off the bench. I know y'all are going to be upset about that. but Quite a bench threat. Quite a weapon. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. yeah man, that, that group right there, like, AI come in off the bench, six men go off, like, you know what I'm saying? Throw your game. It'll be lit. Tyree, start bench cut. Spider-Man, Black Panther, Iron Man. I'm going to cut Iron Man. Okay. Even though I just gave him this great spill, you know what I mean? <laughs> He, he got the honor of being top three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I have to cut him. Spider-Man is definitely starting. And then we can bring Black Panther off the bench. Three artists that you listen to most. I listen to The Temptation as a group. Mm -hmm. So they can be up there. Lil Wayne. Okay. And then I'm with my uncle a lot, so we listen to a little bit of Jay-Z. Okay, Jay Z, Lil Wayne, and The Temptations. Start bench cut. I'm starting The Temptations for sure. I can listen to them at any time of the day, uh, any crowd. You know what I mean? Anybody could could vibe to that music. You know what I mean? It's it's really good music. And we saw you do it pregame in Detroit. Oh many yeah, many times. Motown, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's how. That's what I'm saying. Like stuff like that, history wise. And I don't mean just like really in the books. I mean mm -hmm. like all of the history as far as like which I can look up online. But anyways, that's that's a different time. But yeah, I'm definitely starting the Temptations. <sighs> I'm gonna bring Lil Wayne off the bench just because I'm younger. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to cut Jay Z. Okay, fair enough. Tyrese, start bench cut. Your step back, your floater, or pick six. Pick six as far as me getting a steal. Steal and you could dunk too if you wanted to. You've done it a few times. Cut. <laughs> I'm cutting that one. He's cutting defense. No, I'm cutting the dunking. <laughs> okay, fine. Well, well wait. It, would it make it any different in your answer if it was just a nice, a easy layup? Worth the same amount of points. It was a step back floater. Uh huh. And a pick six for a layup. Um. I mean, I guess a pick six. You gotta put. I'm, I'm gonna put that. I'm gonna bench that one. Really? Sure. Yeah, I'm gonna bench that but one. But it's worth. Potential. Okay, continue. It's what? Go ahead. No, no, no go ahead. What, what were you about to say? Go ahead. No, no, no. I guess the three could be worth more points. No, go ahead. It can be, but I'm I'm only gonna bench that one because like, not because, like, of course defense <laughs> is important. Yes, <laughs> it is. It's very important, extremely. But I'm saying like, as far as like stuff that I would want to see or you know, mm -hmm. cool things, I'm, I'm gonna put that as my bench. Okay. And then my floater, I'm gonna cut it. So Brutal. Sorry. The bread and butter. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it hurts. Or it's maybe to shed a tear later on. Okay. But step back three, whew. <laughs> man, it's that that's that's up there for sure. That's definitely got to start. You get three points on that. It's high percentage shot, and it looks cool. As a player, is that the most satisfying thing you can do on the court? Because you look the most visually, visibly excited after you hit a step back three you do the little celebration you no. have a whole thing you do with your hand now <laughs> no 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 that's not the most sad i can be the most sad i can be is if i can get a block oh my gosh <laughs> when i get a block i'm lit okay so wait anytime start bench cut the pick six with the layup a block or the step back 
Blocks number one. If I can get a block. Really? What? Like that one against Miami one in the playoffs. Anybody. That one was crazy. Anybody. If I can get a block, I'm lit. Uh-huh. That's what I'm like because I'm short and I'm small. So like, I, like to, to go and block somebody from behind and do any type of block like that, I'm happy with that. Um, and then what was the other two? So then you have to choose between the pick six and the step back. Then the pick six will have to get cut. <laughs> I'm sorry. It just is what it is. I already I put the block as number one. That's defense. And then uh, the step back will, it will come off the bench. You but. told a story, I believe, on this program before about the fact that you feel like you probably could block more, but you're trying to, like, be safe and, and conserve. It's more of a risk, right? Right. Uh, yeah. I've been taking a lot more of those risks this year. You have. This year I have. But in the past, you know, in the past, I like when I was in high school, I was trying to block every single shot that got, <laughs> like, and it was just dangerous. I was just running around blocking stuff, and it's like – In high school, you were one of the bigger kids, though, right? Like, yeah, there were a I lot was. of people smaller than you. Yeah, I was, but, like, still, I mean, I was a guard. It's just, like, <laughs> it was cool. I just fly through the air and try to block people's shots. But now it's, like, sometimes I am small, so, like, me jumping, it doesn't – you know what I mean? It doesn't, like – I'm not going to give out all those blocks, you know what I mean? Especially if somebody's right there in front of me and they see me coming. Um, it's – it's they're, I'm probably not going to block it unless I can, you know – just have the right timing, but so now it's just find a way to like also guys shot. So fair enough. Tyree, start bench cut. Game of Thrones and House of Dragon. We can keep that in its own little universe. It's one thing, okay? Playing cards or playing the game. Video games, Call of Duty, the game. House of Dragons. I I normally watch that by myself. Okay. So it's like. I love my alone time. Mm -hmm. I really do. But I, I'm, the reason why I'm going to cut this is because the only reason why I'm going to cut House of Dragons is because playing cards, I'm with my teammates. I get to hang out with them. Or I'm with, you know, I'm doing something with, with somebody that I really like. You know, I don't just play cards with anybody, but I play cards with my family and my teammates. That's it. So I, I'll put that as, as, as my, um, I'm going a, I'm to a bench that one. Playing the game, I'll play the game with like my, my, lifelong yeah. childhood best friends. Uh -huh. So it's anytime I can get on the game with them and laugh, I laugh with them for hours, hours while we're on the game. They like, like they just, they mess with me about like if I have a bad game or if I have a good game or anything that happens around the you know, NBA. So having that time with them is, it's, it's second to none. So I, I'm going to start that one and I'm going to, I'm going to cut Game of Thrones and, and, and House of Dragon only because that would be selfish of me to put that up there. Cause I, that's like when I have my alone time. What did I miss in that trio? Because that was one that you had the hardest time breaking down. And I tried to pick three things that you really like. What could compete? Now, if you ask me to pick my friends over watching the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe, like, yeah, well, let's all those do it. Movies, because in my notes, you can look right here. We'll have here. to have I a conversation there. Okay, let's do it. Let's do Marvel, cards, and playing video cards games with your cut. friends. Really? Cut automatically. RIP. Then I, I, I can't, man. Yeah, I just I love my friends to death. I mean, I love them. They're great people. Wonderful. But he loves people. Superman. But I no, no, I don't love Superman. But he loves Spider Man. Yeah, I just that just that whole entire the way that's that the MCU is set up and how like this is tied into that and this you gotta watch all the way through and gotta watch the credit scene like that's just that's a different type of joy I go to the movies I was going to the I'll tell you this story I was going to the movies by myself like in high school yeah like when movies would come out like I didn't want nobody to talk to me I didn't want to talk at the you movies you needed to lock in yeah I didn't want to talk like I would literally get in the car alright mom I'll see you later where are you going to the movies who are you going with nobody and no I don't want anybody to come with me please and I go get my popcorn I'm there before the previews, I'm sitting in my spot, and I used to always buy an extra ticket right next to me, so nobody was sitting next to me. So I was, I would always do that, and I'll get to watch my little movie. That was like my, that was like my um, special, like alone yeah, time. That yeah, that was my time. That was my time. So I gotta put that as number one. Wow. Okay. Huh. That got to a good place. All right. Last one, Tyrese. Start bench cut. Philly, Dallas, L.A. L.A.'s cut. Ah, yeah. For sure. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to bench Dallas cause that's just the crib, but, uh, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm not going to, yeah, I'm not going to bench Dallas. I got to start Dallas. I'm a bench Philly. Really like Philly, you know, feel like it's a second home now. Um, and, uh, 
Y'all know how I feel about Dallas. Love Dallas. It's a great place where I grew up at. So. Start bench cut. Uh, figure it out. <laughs> Start bench cut. Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, Patrick Mahomes. Okay, Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, Patrick Mahomes. Peyton Manning will be cut. For sure. I must okay. This okay. This is how I feel. All right, here we go. This is how I feel about the Patrick Mahomes and Tom Brady thing. All right, Tom Brady is definitely the goat, but I'm gonna put him on off my bench because I was like a little bit younger mm-hmm. when he came into the league. Right, like I was like at the end of it, I saw like his championships or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like I knew football then. But like what Patrick Mahomes is doing right now, as like I'm an adult, like I can kind of like appreciate it more because like. Me being in a, like a professional sport, I know how hard it is to not just be good at, but like dominate, like yep. year after year after year after year. Like you're in an MVP conversation. Like we have Joel, and he does that. So it's like I know how hard that is, like mm-hmm. to stay healthy, to go out there and perform every single time. Like the weight is on your shoulders. Like Joel, Patrick Mahomes, like Ron, those guys really like it's hard, man. That's a hard. That's a hard task to have, like, a whole franchise on your back, you know what I mean, a whole city on your back. And everybody expects you to be perfect, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? They don't They don't expect you to have bad days. They don't expect you to have off nights. And Patrick Mahomes goes out there every single night and or every single Sunday, Monday, Thursday, whatever day they're playing on, and he performs, and he gets his team to Super Bowls. I think he's, what, he's been to, like, four conference finals or something like five. I don't know how many it is or whatever. and uh, Or NFC champs, AFC championships. Uh, I just think that's special. I think that's special. That's hard to do. So I have to I have to start that one because um you know, that's 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 me being in this profession, it's that's a hard thing to do. You guys are contemporaries and greatness admires greatness. Yep, I agree with that. Tyrese Maxey, thanks as always for joining us on another episode of Courtside Comparisons presented by Nerd Wallet. Nerd Wallet. <laughs>